Darren, welcome back. Um, to get straight to the point, a recent publication, one somewhat unexpectedly co-authored by you, has sparked media discussion questioning whether the scientific community has been overstating the benefits of creatine. Um, I would appreciate your insights on this, particularly your thoughts on the study's methodology, what went wrong, if anything, and whether it warrants a reassessment of creatine's effectiveness. Uh, no, not at all. It's not surprising. Um, I think anytime you have a study that doesn't show some uh, uh, expected effects, uh, but again, the key here is the methodology and the purpose behind the study. So a little bit of context. The goal here was to see if creatines wash in, which no study really ever does. Um, so can creatine cause an increase in lean body mass before resistance training starts? And that's really important because what happens when you measure lean body mass by DEXA or BIA or whichever it is, sometimes that initial uh, water retention, which typically would be in this case without training, that can sort of dilute any treatment effects. So a really cool thing with the study is that they looked at five grams of creatine for one week, and that certainly did improve lean body mass. Now, without training, you would expect since lean body mass makes up a lot of things in the body and water is one of those, it simply showed that that initial water retention and there was no subsequent increase in lean body mass, uh, mass with 12 weeks of training, that increase in the initial week was just so large so to see a treatment effect over time, it was very difficult to do. So a lot of people in the media right now are thinking that creatine is not effective. Um, this study does not uh, disprove that whatsoever. All it simply showed was that the initial water retention during the first week is something to consider. So for future designs, you may want to take a higher dose after the first week or start with a higher dose of creatine to hopefully cause increases in lean body mass that are statistically uh, achievable compared to a placebo. Now, in this effect, you guys are, the, the, I would say the press and the media is saying that creatine, in addition to resistance training, will not increase muscle mass more than training alone. And yeah. what does the science say when you look at multiple randomized controlled trials in, in terms of how creatine plus resistance training affects muscle mass yeah. compared to resistance training alone. We yeah, so that's a lot a perfect... about training volume, right? Increasing yep. creatine, increasing training volume. Yeah, so this is one study of the, the pieces of the puzzle. And I would say about 30 to 40% of the, the studies out there on creatine may not show an effect when it comes to lean tissue. So we're gonna talk about the difference between lean mass and muscle. Um, but when you look at all these studies combined, meta-analysis still show that creatine plus resistance training leads to about a 1.4 kilogram increase in lean body mass. Conservative estimates is that 50% of that lean body mass is dry muscle. So at the end of the day, we can probably conclude that creatine and resistance training leads to about 700 to 800 grams of, of muscle. That's important for the young individuals trying to put on muscle, crucially important for older adults or clinical populations. Um, now, there's only been a few studies to sort of go a little bit beyond lean body mass and using CT scans or muscle thickness, and that's been shown to have some small beneficial effects on regional muscle size. Um, and then there's only about two or three studies that have ever looked at muscle fiber cross-sectional area, and again, showing some benefits to uh, with creatine there as well. What needs to be done is muscle biopsies plus an MRI plus D3 creatine to, to emphatically conclude that creatine leads to a, an increase substantially in, in muscle mass. But we also have so many molecular effects with creatine that are likely explaining uh, why lean body mass and or muscle mass goes up. It's in response to resistance training primarily. And the nice thing there is it seems to improve training capacity. And then one might ask, well, what's really causing your ability to exercise at a higher capacity? And clearly shown with and without exercise, uh, creatine leads to a stimulation of satellite cells, transcription factors, insulin-like growth factor. It increases kinase in the mTOR pathway, and it also reduces a whole bunch of things regarding inflammation and, and oxidative stress. So when you combine the molecular or cellular evidence, with the practical training applications, it's well established that creatine can augment lean body mass from meta-analyses, as well as some small studies that in, increase uh, small indications of muscle mass there as well. Um, so this one study has gotten way blown out of proportion because the intent wasn't to show muscle. It was simply to say, hey, researchers, what should you consider before you design a study? 
and it clearly showed that five grams of creatine in the first week is something to consider how that elevation in lean body mass might dilute your ability to detect changes over time. And what about the fact that the, the your your participant population it seemed like females were driving some of that? Can you can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, the sex uh, sub analysis. It was a small sample size, although it was over fifty. Uh, when you look at the bioavailability there as as well, we didn't see any major differences. And again, this was in young individuals. Uh, we don't know the effects in older adults. Some of the best um, lean tissue mass results are in older adults. There, so some of these factors all play a role. There was a lot of skepticism that they didn't do the loading phase. I think the reason by that is one of the main reasons people are really scared of taking creatine, primarily females, is the loading phase or that uh, net water retention. The small amount of lean body mass that was shown with five grams is something to consider. And I'm going to be doing this now when we're doing future designs. So, for example, if we're measuring lean body mass by DEXA or BIA, whichever, this is something to really pay attention to. Maybe you want to do a pre-supplementation phase, then start the loading phase or resistance training after that, because if you get a fluctuation in lean body mass, and that might be one of your main dependent variables, it, you may not get any statistical significant results. So um, that's why I posted on Instagram that lean body mass is not muscle. One component of lean body mass is muscle, but it includes organs, connective tissue, and, and water. And that's clearly what the purpose here is as well. So if there was a much larger sample size, mm -hmm. do you think perhaps maybe some statistical significance might be detected in changes in lean body mass? In other words, you'd see more what you're seeing with meta-analyses mm -hmm. in terms of creatine improving lean body mass of what you said about 50% maybe dry muscle. Yeah, hundred percent. The the grams were uh, substantially in favor of creatine there as well, and a little bit longer or higher dose. Um, so again, the dose was small, but it did clearly show that yes, creatine is osmotic, so it supports all the molecular uh, effects there. Um, and I know it it might sound negative in the press, but it's actually very positive when you consider, hey, this was a viable source of creatine. It did exactly what we purported. It increases cellular hydration. It just might offset your ability to detect any changes over time. So a lot of people thought maybe you should have did the loading phase. That would have led to way more water retention. You may not get the effects. But what it also suggests is that maybe five grams may not be enough once you start weight training to cause those significant increases in lean tissue mass and or muscle mass. So... If I understand correctly, you're saying perhaps when you're saying that the the increases in hydration of the cell may be offsetting small changes in other, you know, like. Yeah, muscle. that's right. That's right. Because when you have the cell swelling, that's an improving lean tissue mass. And by the precision error in a lot of machines we use, uh, you may not know if it's increasing hydration in the body. Is the blood changing? Is the organ over 12 weeks? So a higher dose might cause those greater effects, which lead to an increase in lean body mass. So I'll put it this way. If the study showed that creatine after 12 weeks of training significantly increased lean body mass, there will be no questions. Everybody would say, oh, that makes sense. And then the scientists would say, OK, what was increasing in lean body mass? And they're like, I don't know. And that's the big take home here. We think half a lean body mass is muscle, but until a study shows that, we need to rely on the cellular mechanisms. Okay, so the bottom line here, other studies have found five grams of creatine a day plus resistance training can increase lean body mass and presumably 50% of that is, is you know muscle mass. So... What's what's the take home here? Well, there's other studies with five grams is very viable. And not only did it increase lean body mass, but there's been other studies with five grams clearly showing it increases muscle fiber area type one and type two. And it also increases total creatine content. So, again, it substantiates that five grams is a very viable dose. It just so happened in this study, the main purpose was to see could the first week of creatine, which some people experience water retention, could that dilute any significant effects? And that's clearly what the study showed. It had nothing to do with saying creatine is worthless. I don't know where these headlines came from. That wasn't even an intent of the study. It was to simply show, does the first week at five grams cause any water intake fluctuations? And it clearly showed that. It had nothing to do with muscle or anything, but the totality of evidence 
it's clearly suggested by meta-analysis, yes, lean body mass goes up. And obviously, five grams is a very viable dose to improve many factors, including muscle creatine content, fiber area, and performance. Well, I think the confusion comes from the fact that, you know, after the initial seven days of creatine supplementation without resistance training, you would expect the 12 weeks of resistance training plus creatine supplementation would also cause increases in lean body mass and right. muscle. And that was not found. And, and right. so that's, I think, where the confusion comes in. And, and why do you think that is compared to other studies? Yeah, there's a lot of things. We have to look at other factors such as a dietary intake. It was about 180 gram difference in creatine, which was superior. But with the low sample size and the trend over time, it just didn't lead to statistical significance. If you look at the practical meaning, it was still there as well. Uh, and again, the sensitivity of the measurements. But if they were to do muscle biopsies or an MRI, I'm very confident you probably would have actually seen a su substantial increase in muscle cross-sectional area. But DEXA, there's about a you know anywhere between a two to five percent uh, standard error of, of uh, measurement error there. So that had to come overcome it as well. Um, so again, if they use more elaborate, sophisticated techniques, I'm pretty confident you would see that. So for example, muscle ultrasound, I'm pretty sure you probably would have seen some increases there uh, with creatine as well, because the meta-analysis we did before uh, with Brad Schoenfeld clearly showed that muscle ultrasound and PQCT show small, but there are significant increases in regional muscle size. So it could have been based on the technology. It could have been based on a number of factors, young individuals or uh, the training status, but likely the small population with sub-analysis of sex was one of the limiting factors. Well, um, these were untrained indiv individuals, is that correct? They were. So yeah, don't so untrained the individuals. Yeah. yeah, well, don't they untrained individuals with, when you add in resistance training, don't they gain a lot of, of muscle mass pretty? Yeah. Like they can both. That's that's probably the number one factor. They were untrained. So both are going to respond quite well. So the treatment has to be so magnitude to get over those facts. Would this happen in trained people? No, I would expect the other way. I expect if you took trained individuals with five grams of creatine, they would get a greater significant increase, not only in lean mass, but some other measures of muscle and, and body composition there as well. So the caveat is untrained individuals taking a supplement and then you're also adding exercise. So it's, lo it's logical that both populations would respond. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of what I was thinking when I read it was untrained individuals. I thought, oh, well, <laughs> the people doing just resistance training with placebo are going to have a pretty good response because they're untrained, right? That's pretty and, well And known. if they don't, that's right. And if they don't, then there's a problem with the, the design of the resistance training, which everybody should respond uh, quite well at resistance training, especially untrained. And as we talked about in this episode, you know, the effects on creatine on muscle mass, it's not anabolic, you know, it's working mostly, I mean, there's other mechanisms you mentioned, but also just through increasing training volume, there's effects on training on muscle strength, right, which yes. are important. And so at the end of the day, like you said, you know, a, a 700 or 800 gram increase in muscle mass is important to a lot of people. I would be stoked to have that, you know. Yeah, the, the elegancy of creatine is unique. It, it, in some studies, it improves muscle or training volume quite substantially. But the unique thing is in the studies that they equate muscle or training volume, creatine from a cellular effect, it still turns on all those molecular signals, which could cause an increase or explain why individuals on creatine seem to be able to do more uh, repetitions, get stronger, have greater recovery, and increase not only lean mass, but it's highly likely an improvement in muscle size. We've seen some um, muscle uh, biopsy studies look at that as well, and some MRI studies as well. So, um, and again, 700 grams of muscle may not sound that attractive to a young person, but as we get older in clinical populations, anti-sarcopenia, it's crucially important. Um, so those headlines say, is it worthless? Absolutely not. If anything, it's the other way. It has so many profound benefits. Yeah, it's too bad that, you guys didn't get use ultrasound. I mean, I know you, that wasn't your end point. You were looking, you were actually looking at lean body mass. And so that's why you chose the technique you chose, but it would, it would kind of be nice to have that data to yes. see and compare. Yeah. yeah. And that's why reading the study, you always have to take a little bit of caution in the technology that we use. You know, if we use Skinfold, most people they're like, oh, there's a lot of error in that. And, and yes, it was a whole body x-ray, but it did measure everything. Um, and again, there's a lot of things in lean tissue mass, but we need to do some more elegant studies that look at pure muscle. And I'm very confident with training, uh, creatine could be advantageous for sure. So just to recap and make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm completely getting understanding this, 
you know, nuanced study correctly. Um, first and foremost, the, the, the creatine supplementation plus the resistance training might have very well likely increased muscle mass. Mm -hmm. If, if one, the tools used were more sensitive, i.e. maybe ultrasound, right. looking at muscle. Two, if the sample size, study sample size was larger to pick up statistical significance because the effect of creatine plus resistance training is already quite small, generally right. speaking, resistance training is the main driver of muscle it mass is. growth. Um, and so you, you need a larger sample size to do that. Mm -hmm. And is there a third, perhaps the dose of creatine? Uh, the, the dose or the training status. If these were trained individuals, they would have likely had the big effect. And, and I think, you know, the dose, I'm confident of five grams starting on a daily basis, although it'll take a little bit longer to saturate your muscle. That's a very healthy, viable dose that has been shown in other studies without a loading phase uh, to be effective. But you're 100% correct on all those variables. I think reading the context of the study and what the purpose was is really important. Um, unfortunately, headlines can be a little misconstrued. Um, it's not worthless of anything. It, it's it's quite uh, a substantially beneficial. And there's been study after study clearly shown it improves lean body mass, regional muscle thickness, and there's prob a high probability it would improve uh, muscle mass from a muscle cross-sectional area or muscle fiber area, type 1 and 2. So rest assured, for those taking creatine and weight training, it's definitely contributing for sure to your gains in, in the gym. Um, and that's why meta-analysis narrative review clearly show when you add in all those studies that have looked at a variety of techniques, uh, creatine still leads to about a one and a half kilogram increase in lean body mass. And if we accept 50% of that might be muscle, that is substantial. And then again, for rehabilitation purposes, regional muscle thickness, uh, hugely important. So if anything, I think momentum behind creatine has never been as strong. I don't think studies like this deter that. I think if you understand the context of what was being studied, it does make sense when we try to explain it for sure. Well, thank you so much for explaining that. It makes a lot more sense to me and hopefully others now. Great. Thanks so much.